since we are, you know, like in the closing days of the impeachment trial, and we've got these caucuses coming up later on today, I think that both of those things should be a reminder that. Uh, what happens in our government is important. The things that we see that are really obvious, the moves that Donald Trump and um, you know his Republican backers have made that have been really bad for the country. But perhaps more importantly, the things that don't get a lot of press attention, that have a significant effect on people's lives in a negative direction, but don't generally get talked about very much. And so what Trump does, what a future Democratic president might do in these areas, very important. And so I wanna focus on one example of that, and that is uh, disability rights and social security funding for people with disabilities. Because the Trump administration is making a fairly significant change that is not getting talked about very much. Now, basically, they're going to be effectively cutting about $2.6 billion in funding for people with disabilities, you know, healthcare and all of that over the course of the next 10 years, a absolutely huge amount of money. And there is some pushback. Inside of our elected officials, you know, you got 150 lawmakers in the House and Senate signing an open letter, calling it harmful and unjustified. Um, but the media in general, like this, is sort of a thing that we see when it comes to disability rights. It's not a thing that generally gets talked about very much. So I want to delve just a little bit into how this change is going to impact the lives of millions of Americans and what might happen if Donald Trump is replaced by one of the leading Democrats in this primary. So what would this change that they're making do? It would require millions of beneficiaries to reprove their disability and navigate a complex web of red tape and paperwork every two years. Hundreds of thousands of people could lose benefits even though their condition has not changed. And so effectively what they're going to do is there's various classifications for how often you need to reprove disability, have your condition be updated, all of that. Now, something like that does have to happen, obviously. But what they're going to be doing is creating new classification standards where more people will have to do this on a more regular basis. And when you throw people into that minotaur's maze of red tape and bureaucracy, the chance that some sort of mistake in your paperwork or an inability or not having enough funding to get the help to go through all this paperwork on a recurring basis, more and more people will having nothing to do with their disability status be thrown off of their coverage. And that is one of the ways that they're gonna get to that several billion dollars in savings over 10 years. It's a savings only in that these people will not be saved from the medical expenses for the disabilities that they have effectively. Now, as it stands right now, approving eligibility for benefits is an arduous process. It can take months, if not years, hundreds, if not thousands of pages of medical evidence. We have about the strictest eligibility standards in the world already. This is before the change. And over 60% of applications are denied. Tens of thousands of people die each year waiting for benefits. So you could justifiably and understandably label the current status quo an incredibly cruel and damaging way to do this process. But it's only going to get worse with these new changes. So that's the status quo and what Trump wants to do. Well, what about on the Democratic side? So in a tight Democratic primary race, disability rights has emerged as a leading issue. You have Senators Elizabeth Warren and Amy Klobuchar, Andrew Yang and Pete Buttigieg all have released extensive plans having to do with disability rights. You also have just a few days ago, Bernie Sanders has his own plan, which we're gonna delve just a little bit into. The only serious candidate without a detailed disability rights plan is Joe Biden. And he is a guy that has, while not embracing something like Medicare for all, talked about medical issues as a centerpiece of his campaign. You know, the moonshot against cancer, that sort of thing. But there is this significant blind spot, and that is disability rights. Now, many of the candidates, as we just said, do have plans. And you should totally look into them and understand what they wanna do. I'm gonna dive into Sanders, partially because he's got the most recent, the most fleshed out, and I support him as a candidate. But to give an idea of some of the changes that he would make, his plan vows to quote, incorporate disability issues into every other area of public policy. Which is, from my point of view, it is the Green New Dealization of politics, an understanding of the interrelated na- nature of uh, policies that don't on their face seem connected. But they're going to do this in this other area. He's gonna create a National Office of Disability Coordination to run policy and to ensure that all public resources are compliant with the Americans with Disabilities Act. He's going to use executive actions as well as legislation because this is the sort of area where you would imagine how could 
senators like vote against some sort of plan to better the condition of hundreds of thousands or millions of people with chronic medical disabilities. Um, yeah, no, Mitch McConnell would vote down all of it. And so he will use executive actions to get across some of this. They're going to ensure that every American who needs it can be supported in their own home by workers that are compensated at fair wages. So there, that's sort of the the labor philosophy overlaid over new rights for people with disabilities. You're making sure that the people on both sides are doing better under the new system. The proposal would also ensure that the needs of people with disabilities as well as older people are met with his proposed Medicare for all plan. As well as eliminating the SSI program's marriage penalty, which reduces the amount that two beneficiaries may receive if they are married. And so that is a great example of what he's saying when he's saying that this sort of overhauling of how the government approaches disability rights is going to be integrated into other policies, including centerpieces to his campaign like Medicare for All. Now, as I said, the other candidates do have plans as well. And all of them look like good improvements, not only on Donald Trump who's moving us in the wrong direction, but the current status quo as well. And I, I wanted to talk about this and I wanted to have it first in our show because these sorts of issues, how fundamental they are to so many Americans deserve far more attention. And at a time when we are talking about what Donald Trump continuing his term and possibly having a second one means. And when we're debating between these different primary candidates, these are the sorts of issues that should be foremost in our minds. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.